Hello everybody, I am Tom and you are watching me play Genshin Impact. So, update 3.6 has dropped. Right now I wish I was sitting at the top of a tree, looking out over a meadow, cider in hand. <sighs> Thanks Fenty. Uh, so 3.6 has dropped. Um, I, turns out I chose a relatively good get time to come back to the game because not only do I have a bunch of stuff to do, there's a bunch of new things out, including the Archon that I missed, apparently. So I've been spoiled somewhat in knowing that this is the Archon. Nahida, I think, is the Ar the Dendro Archon. Um, and I want all the Archons at the very least, so I'm probably going to be wishing for her. Um, but before I do that, I know literally nothing about her because I haven't done the Sumeru story yet or anything, really. Um, but there's a few things that we can do just uh, starting out as a new content drops. Specifically, I can run the test runs with all of them to see how they play. Uh, these are the four four stars. Uh, these are the two five stars. I've never played with any of these characters. I know nothing about any of them. So why not do a, uh, a test run of each of them, shall we? None of these are new. They're all rerun characters, but they're new to me because I didn't play for like a year. Um, I didn't read that, so we'll figure out what she does on the fly. Uh, shield character with a sword, seemingly. And I'm doing frost damage. Pretty consistently doing frost damage by the look of it. So I guess when I have the the shield, I do frost particles and then I burst. Keeps doing constant frost. In a pretty big area too, that's pretty cool. Hmm. And we. Oh, so sorry. Come on, we can do it. I'll protect you. Oh. Oh, no! Stars shine for me. My guiding stars. Seems pretty good. She's kind of just a shielder, really. But hey, shielders are good, so... Yeah, like, this is, that's a perfect shield by the look of it. Seems like perfect shield with relatively good dura duration, and it lets me free stuff. Like, this combo here is just permafreeze, right? She seems cool. She doesn't seem amazing, but she seems cool. Interesting four star for like permafreeze teams, I think. And a bit of protection because you actually have like the um, new card available at the card shop. Um, <laughs> she seems cool because she has a bunch of uh, constant cryo application, right? Which is interesting. Uh, she, I assume, is Electro? Well, these characters, like, I have no idea about these characters in the story either, right? Because they're all post where I played up to, so I've never even been introduced to them story-wise. So... Um, the troubleshooter shots from Dory's elemental skill will create two homing after sales service rounds <laughs> upon hitting opponents. Her elemental burst summons a Jin, Jinny? A Jin? That can connect to a near... Oh, genie. They can connect to a nearby character, constantly regenerating their HP and elemental energy. Interesting. Additional elemental orbs will drop during this trial event challenge. Yeah. So she's a battery, I guess? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's a Claymore user, and that's a really unique animation set. That's kind of cool. Come a little closer. Can hyper bloom it. So I summon the genie, and that gives me healing, healing, and a bunch of energy, like a bunch of energy. Surrender, and I'll be gentle. You're in for a little shock. <laughs> All right, so Lisa's hurt, and we go next to light. Yeah, it's a lot of healing. Like quite a bit of healing. Jeez, 
she seems fun. Again, she doesn't seem like a hard carry or anything, because she kind of a supportish character. But, I don't know, fun nonetheless. Uh, so far, I am not disappointed in them, such that I wouldn't want to pull them. So that's always good. Often I'll play a character and I'm like, eh, I wish they weren't on this banner that I'm pulling on, because they're like... I don't find them fun or whatever. Um, Kuki Shinobu. Interesting. Ninja Girl. Kuki Shinobu's elemental skill will sacrifice a certain amount of percentage of her HP to create a grass ring of sanctification that will heal friendly characters and deal continuous electro damage to surrounding opponents. She creates a cleansing field under her elemental burst that deals continuous AoE electro damage to opponents within it. This field will last longer if Shinobu creates it while her HP is no higher than 50%. Okay, so you drain your health with your E and then use your burst when you're under 50% and it gives it a higher effect? That seems cool. Very good support by the sound of it. Oh yeah, I see. And I assume that sticks around, yeah, that sticks around through swaps. And then we have a burst. Jesus. That's actually really cool. Let's spark things up a little. Oh, so sorry. Eat this! Out of my way! She seems like a Support DPS, right? Or off DPS, I guess you would call it. She does all of her damage off field. You just pop your pop your e ability and pop your um pop your Q, and then you can swap out to another character. She seems good for applying electro, though. See, the other two were all right. She seems good, which is is an interesting distinction, but <laughs> it's one that I've seemed to made. Uh, cool, so let's have a look back here. <laughs> Apparently they count as finishing domains, good to know. Uh, Nilu, Dance of the Lotus Light. So this is the first five star, probably not the one I'm going to wish for immediately. I want to go her first because she's an Archon, I think. I think, I could be wrong about this because I haven't played the story, right? But I know kind of just from osmosis of going back into Genshin that she's one of the, I think she's the Dendro Archon. But uh, I don't know about this girl whatsoever, so let's try her out. Nilu's elemental skill. Nilu? 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 It'll be Nilu, presumably. Uh, elemental skill will cause her to enter a special pirouette state, allowing her to use unique hydro elemental dance steps that will replace her normal attack and elemental skill, with her third dance steps type granting her different subsequent effects. Interesting. After she completes her third dance step, having the right element in your party will cause her to grant only by characters the Golden Chalice's bounty, which will cause the Dendro cores created by Bloom reactions they trigger to become Bountiful cores instead. Now, an elemental burst will deal AoE Hydro damage to nearby opponents before dealing another instance of Hydro damage to them after a short delay. Additional elemental lawyer. She sounds complex. But clearly you want to use her with a Dendro team, it seems. With all my so that's a normal- oh, I see. So E puts her into- it infuses her with Den uh, Hydro. I'll protect us. And uh, Q? Does a big bloom, and then a second attack. Interesting. Is that just in front of her? Interesting. She seems like an actual Hydro DPS, which I don't think I have, so that's cool, I guess. That second burst is cool. Interesting. She actually seems pretty cool, too. I kind of want to pull for her now as well, but we'll see. I have to look at the constellations of both these characters to see whether I actually want constellations. Because if I want constellations of the Archon, then I'm going to be rolling on the Archon with priority, right? We'll see. 
A hitter's elemental skill can deal dendro damage and mark opponents hit with the seed of scan Skanda? Skandaha or Skanta? Linking them to one another. When held, this skill can be released after aiming. Linking them together. Wait, wait a minute. As in linking them damage wise? After you trigger elemental reactions on opponents who are thusly linked together, Nahida will deal dendro damage to the opponents and all connected opponents. Jesus. Um, Nahida's elemental burst will unleash the Shrine of Maya. F Shrine of Maya field, providing Nahida with specified buffs based on the number of Pyro, Electro, or Hydro characters within the party, respectively. Okay, so that's a complex skill. So, E. I marked one? That doesn't really link them, does it? Hang on. I see. I can hold it to mark multiple. Now they're linked, I see. So if we goober them. Link them together. Cast our Q. I know I'm buffed somehow. Come a little closer. Everyone hold hands. Everything. Surrender and be gentle. Let's dance. Jesus, she does so much damage. <laughs> Just the the additional damage she does is nutty. Uh, I need to check. Does this work off field? If I go like that, do an elemental reaction on them. Yes. Oh my god, she works off field. <laughs> Look how much damage that's doing. Because it's burning the dendro off, right? Come on, Overload them, and... That is such a good off DPS. Well, I'm glad... <laughs> I mean... <laughs> She's so good. <laughs> that seems nutty. Like, I'm not crazy in thinking that's, like, nutty broken, right? I haven't looked up any, like, reviews or anything in any of these characters. But I get the distinct feeling that she is, like, OP as fuck. Or at the very least, like, meta, right? The rest of them, whatever. Um, she seemed like the best out of the four stars, but she seemed like top tier five star. Like Shogun Zhongli levels, right? Which makes sense if she's an Archon, I suppose. Well. I've done all of the trials. Let's get to the wishing, shall we? Uh, so I have a fair amount of wishes saved up. I have 22,000 Prima Gems plus 50 wishes. So I think that guarantees me Nahida, right? Because it's what? 180 wishes is going to be the maximum that I do. Um, if I lose every amount of luck, it's going to be 180 wishes before I get her. And I have... What's this? 140. 40 something plus 50 yeah I've got like 190 wishes so I should be fine um let's start shall we I'm also you know <laughs> I want to see the four stars too <sighs> Goro I don't have Goro so that's great not on the banner but I don't care I'll happily lose that 50-50 for a character I don't have. That's fantastic. I now have Dog Boy. So this should be guaranteed to be one of the bar banner characters, right? So it's going to be another new 4-star. Layla. Another new character. I have too many characters that I can't build because I don't have the time to actually get the resources at this point. But, you know, whatever. Favonius Codex? That's fine, I guess. I haven't r 5 Favonius yet, I don't think. And Nilu. Oh, Layla, rather, not Nilu. Nilu's the water girl, right? Layla. 
story, isn't it? And okay, I now have all of the all of the four stars on the banner. I just need the five star. Fantastic. Well, this is being uh nice and eventful so far. I think we're approaching pity at this point. Another kooky. Yanfei. I'll take a constellation on Yanfei. Why not? Um, so I had 143, I guess. No, I had 140. So... 30... 30... Okay, so I'm getting a 5 star this wish, right? This is 90, this is pity. So we went all the way to pity on that one. We got in a heater though. We won the 50-50, so I'll take it. That's what I like to see, game, more of that. And I guess I didn't technically go all the way to pity because it was like near the start of the pool. And we got another cookie, sweet. Um, so, I want to see her constellations. We have a hundred wishes left, right? But I want to know how useful her constellations are. So, constellation. Uh, so I see one. When the Shrine of Maya is unleashed and the elemental types of the party members are being tabulated, they count, will add one to the number of pyro, electro, and hydro characters, respectively. What does this actually do? So, Shrine of Maya is a alt, right? Talents. Manifest the Court of Dreams and expands the Shrine of Mara. Here we go. When the Shrine of Mara field is unleashed, the following effects will be separately unleashed based on the elemental types present within the party. So if you have Pyro character, while Nahida remains within the Shrine of Mara, the damage dealt by Tri Karma Purification from all schemes to no is increased. So if you're in the Shrine, the AoE damage from this does more if you have a Pyro character. Okay. While the heater remains within the Shrine of Mara, the interval between each attack for this is decreased. Okay, so it ups your DPS, and it does faster attacks. And Hydro, it doubles, uh, well, it doesn't double, but it increases the duration of your Shrine. Okay. If there are at least two party members of the aforementioned elemental types present and the field is deployed, the aforementioned effects will be increased further. Interesting. Even if Nahida is not on the field, these bonuses will take effect so long as party members are within the sh Okay. So this just works for everybody, not just her. Which I guess makes sense, because it's all buffing this one, which works off-field. So, obviously, this will work off-field, too. So does it tell you the difference? Oh, here we go. Uh, so Pyro's in one character is 14, two is 22.3. That's significant. Like, these obviously stack, right? So if you have a C1 and you have a Pyro, Electro, and Hydro character, uh, Shrine of Mara will last longer, the the triggers are going to be faster, and they're going to be doing more damage? Am I getting that right? Interesting. Okay, so C1 seems nutty. It just, because it just, it's a straight buff to everything she does. C2... Opponents that are marked by her E applied. Interesting. I didn't know you could apply it other than her. Will be affected by the following effects. Burning, Bloom, Hyper Bloom, and Burgeon reactions. Damage they receive can score crit hits. Crit rate and crit damage are fixed at 20% and 100% respectively. Within 8 seconds of being affected by Quicken, Aggravate, Spread, defense is decreased by 30 that seems nutty too. So you can crit your elemental reactions, uh, specifically burning, bloom, and hyper. So any reaction that goes with dendro. And then the other two that are more the passive ones, they decrease the defense for eight seconds. That seems nutty too. C2 seems really good too. C3. Okay. You just increase that. That's fine. One, two, three, four, or more nearby opponents are affected by all schemes to know seeds of Skanda Nahida's elemental mastery will be increased by 100. So you just buffer elemental mastery by a bunch. 
which seems good because I think all of her damage is elemental reaction, right? So C4 is very good, and let's just increase, and what's a C6? When <laughs> C6 is always huge. When the heater hits an opponent affected by all schemes and no seeds of scan, scan to her, with normal or charged attacks after unleashing Illusory Heart, she will use tri -Karma Purification, Karmic Oblivion on this opponent and all connected opponents dealing dendro damage based on 200% of Nahida's attack and 400% of her elemental mastery. Damage dealt by tri -Karma Purification, Karmic Oblivion, is considered elemental skill damage and can be triggered once every 0.2 seconds. This effect can last up to 10 seconds and will, remove, and will be removed after Nahida's run at least 6 instances. Okay, what the hell? A C6 just makes her insane. Obviously, I'm not going to go for C6 because that's a bit nutty, but I think I definitely want C1. And depending how early I get C1, I might go for C2. Because C2 seems really good too. But I don't know. I mean, it might be over the top, to be honest. One in five of your elemental reactions will do double damage. And depending on the build you're doing with her, you can also have a 30% defense decrease, which is actually kind of huge, right? Defense decrease in this game is kind of nutty. Hmm. All right, fuck it. Uh, I have a hundred wishes. So we're like seven or eight onto pity. Let's just pretend that this is the first temple, right? So this will be ten into pity. Another kooky, cool. Another Dory, cool. I didn't even look at their constellations, by the way. I just kind of ignore them, but whatever. Four stars, you can get constellations a lot easier, so it's <coughs> it's not really worth looking into. So let's say we're 20 into pity. 30 into pity. Let's skip it. Not particularly care about that. Another four star. We've got another Layla. Cool. Let's do one more here. Okay. So we got Lion's Roar. Whatever. Alright. I think... I still want the C1. So I'm going to go this. Why not? Another Dory. There we go. Let's see how lucky we get. Do we win on another 50 50? That's the real question here. Another Dory, which is nice. And a stringless. Okay. We do win the 50 50. That's a C1 right there. Fantastic. So, with that out of the way, uh, we have 33 wishes. We might want to go for Nilu now, because she seemed really cool. I kind of liked her as a character too. Either that or the weapon banner, but the weapon banner is a trap, let's be honest. It's like, it, it is a trap, it's always been a trap. I'm in two minds now. Because I have no idea how good this weapon is, too. Like, what does this weapon do? Thousand Nights Dawn Song. Party members other than the equipped ca equipping character will provide the equipping character with buffs based on whether their elemental type is the same as the latter or not. Sorry? <laughs> okay, so your other party members will provide the equipped party member buffs based on whether the element type is the same as the latter or not. If the elemental types are the same, increase elemental mastery by 32. If not, increase the equipped equi equipping character's damage bonus from their elemental type by 10%. Each of the aforementioned effects can have up to three stacks. Additionally, all nearby party members other than the equipping character will have their elemental mastery increased by 40. Right. Multiple such effects from multiple such weapons can stack. Okay, so if you had this, this is obviously Nahida's weapon, like look at it, but if you have this on Nahida, she's a Dendro character, 
So if you have another Dendro character on your team, they will get a 32 mastery, uh, elemental mastery boost. Or 96 maximum master, elemental mastery boost. And all your other characters will get a 10 to 30% da elemental damage boost for their equipping. No, it, if they're not matching Dendro, then they get buff Nahida by 30%. Interesting. Okay, that kind of makes sense. That seems fine, but I feel like there's probably a bunch of free options for her. And this, I guess, is must be Nilu's weapon? Sunken Song of the Sands. Um, key of Kaj Nisut. Fair enough. It's HP and base attack. HP increased by 20%. That's a flat buff. When an elemental skill hits opponents, you gain the Grand Him effect for 20 seconds. The effect increases the equipped character's elemental mastery by 0.12% of their max HP. Okay, that's actually fairly significant. It looks ridiculous as 0.12%, but you're also talking about max HP, which gets to like, I don't know, 30,000 probably or higher. This effect can trigger once every 0.3 seconds, max of three stacks. Okay. When this effect gains three stacks, or when the third stack's duration is refreshed, the elemental mastery of all nearby party members will be increased by 0.2% of the equipped character's max HP for 20 seconds. I sh okay, so this works really well on Nyla, or on Nylu, Nylu, Nyla, Nylu. Works well on her because her E turns her elemental skill, like her normal attacks, into an elemental skill damage, right? So you're pretty much always going to have all three stacks. I guess you buff her HP? Is, do her skills buff with HP? Is that a thing? Enters a pirouette state, dealing hydro damage to nearby opponents based on Nylu's max HP. Yeah, okay, that's clearly her sword, right? Hmm. I am reticent to pull on the weapon banner. The reason being is because you pull on the weapon banner when I don't have her. This weapon seems very specifically made for her. And I feel like I could get other weapons that would work well on Nahida, right? Let's do one temple on this just in case we get really lucky and get a back to back five star, right? You never know, for the content. Oh, nice. I got Mika. He was on the last banner and I didn't pull on the last banner because he was the only new character that I like cared about. So that's cool. Um, well, that's sweet. Uh, you know what? Fuck it. I have an entire like two regions to explore. I feel like I'm going to get like a bunch of primo gems. The bell. That's... Unfortunate. And we'll do the last temple. Burn them all, baby. Phony sword. Great. Cool. So I think we're done. With wishing. Now, I'm pretty sure. I'm gonna be uh, pretty sure here. Let's do all my constellations. Yamfei got a constellation. Um, is her C2 really good? Increases Yamfei charge attack crit rate by 20%. Gets, that's fantastic. Her whole thing is crit rate, I think. Uh, or her whole thing is a charge attack, I think. We have the C1 here, which makes her quite good. It just doubles the buff, essentially. So that's great. Um, we then have her. How high did we get? C4, okay. Um, the shield absorption of the Curtain of Slumber generated by Knights of Formal Focus increased by 20%, so better shield. Additionally, when unleashed, Knight of Formal Focus, she will generate a shield for any nearby party members who are not being protected by a Curtain of a Slumber. The shield will have 35% of the absorption of current of Slumber, will cast, last for 12 seconds, and will absorb cryo damage with 200. Okay, so she does an, an additional cryo shield? I actually don't know if that helps me personally or not. That much. Because that sounds like it's a... Like a co-op thing. When shooting stars from Knights of Fallen Focus strike opponents, they will each restore one energy to Layla. That's great.
that's that's a great upgrade. I'll take that one. Uh, this one here, increasing the level. Yeah, that's fine. And then we have this one. When Knights of Formal Focus star starts to fire off shooting stars, it will grant all nearby party members the Dawn Star effect, causing their normal and charge attack damage to increase based on 5% of Layla's max HP. Dawn Star can last up to 3 seconds and will be removed 0.05 seconds after dealing normal charge attack damage. Okay. So just, that's a damage buff. I'll take it. What is a C6? Shooting stars from us deal 40% increased damage. Yeah, okay. Not particularly interesting. And we have Dory, who has got to C5. Okay. Number of after sales service rounds created by trouble shot. Yeah, that's just a buff. When you're in combat and the Jin heals the character it is connected to, it will fire a Ginny troop. Genie? Is it Genie or Ginny? I think it's Genie, is the idea. It's like a pun, right? Fires a Genie troop from the character's position that deals 50% of Dory's attack down. Okay, cool. So it makes the heal turret into like a little bit of extra damage. Cool. Increases the level. We love it. The character connected to Genie will obtain the following buffs based on the current HP and energy. When their HP is lower than 50%, they gain 50% increased healing bonus. And when their energy is less than 50%, they gain 30% energy recharge. Cool. And then we have Varial of Mara, which is just leveling that up by three. Cool. And Kuki, we got C3. Okay. Um, Constellation 1. Gyoe Narukami Kayama's writes, AoE is increased by 50%. Is that her... What talent is that? It's her ultimate. Okay. That's great. Because it did seem relatively small. So, bigger AoE sounds great to me. Um, and increase that by uh, 3. No, I take it back. It ta increases the duration by 3 seconds, and this increases the level by 3. Cool. Let's just see. When the normal charged or plunging attack of the character affected by her E hit opponents, a Thunder Grass mark will land on the opponent's position to deal electro damage based on. Interesting. So that's actually a pretty good one. And a C6. Uh, when she takes lethal damage, this instance of damage will not take her down. This effect will automatically trigger when her HP reaches 1 and will trigger once every 60 seconds. When Shinobi's HP drops below 25%, she will also gain 150 elemental mastery for 15 seconds. This effect will trigger once every 60 seconds. Interesting. I guess that makes sense for a character that is doing damage to themselves, right? But I think you would just pair her with someone that wasn't, right? Uh, do I have a weapon for you? Probably not. Let's be honest. I don't have that many catalysts. So we really want a shitload of elemental mastery. Oh, wow. Nahida can use all skimps to know to interact with some harvestable items with a fixed AOE. This skill may even have some other effects. Interact with harvestables. Really? Does that mean she can, like... So let me check something. <laughs> Uh, Shingling. Time to broaden the horizon. Well, she's very cute. So can I do? I That's so fucking sweet. Really? I can just. Makes farming so much nicer. What the hell? Okay, she's very cute, but... <laughs> um, so we need... Energy... Oh, elemental mastery. Is what we want to build on her. I guess I can do a magic guide. That gives elemental mastery. I have another plus five here. For now, let's go with this. All right, so I'm back. I've built her as much as I can without... It's so fucking cute. Um, I've built her as much as I can without actually going to Sumeru and farming some more. Um, I still don't know what weapon I'm going to put on her. I'm thinking maybe Mapper Mare for free to play. Like, 
Maybe that's good. I don't know. We'll see. I'll look it up and see. Hey. Doesn't let me link the um link the pigeons together annoyingly. But what you gonna do? So I currently have a team full of Archons, by the way. Electro Archon, Dendro Archon, <laughs> Animo Archon, and Geo Archon. So I'm happy thus far. And I think the next one we're going to is... The Water Region? Fontaine, I want to say. But I haven't even done any of the Subaru stuff yet, so I need to do that first. So I think that's going to be it for this video. I got the character I wanted. I now have all the Archons. Uh, but... If you like this video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time, where I don't know what I want to do. I really want to get into Sumeru and do all the stuff in Sumeru. But I also have, like, so many character quests to do. Like, I have all of these. I have all of these. Like, I have so many character quests. It's ridiculous. I kind of want to do, like, all of these ones that I can do in Inazuma before I head off. Because I, th I think, like, all like from Tignari this way, I think all of these are in Sumeru, so I'd have to complete the Sumeru quest anyway before I unlock these. But these ones are all, like, I'm pretty sure these are all Inazuma characters. So I can do them all, you know, in Inazuma before I leave. But I just want to kind of get to the new stuff. Uh, it's a hard knock life. We'll figure it out. Anyway, as I said... Like the video, subscribe, all that kind of jazz, and I'll see you next time with more Genshin Impact. Yeah!